And there it is, folks. Review of the day. The Coil Master version 3. You can find this at www.coil-master.net. This is the upgraded version to the version 2. The version 2, really one of the only big differences between the version 1 and the version 2 was that the top caps and bottoms of the bars were labeled with the sizes. Aside from that, from what I understand, there wasn't really all that much difference between the versions 1 and 2. The version 3, however, blows it out of the park. A lot of differences. Um, first things first, we'll go into it comes with its own little carry bag. Little cinch sack, whatever you want to call it. No. Right there, coilmaster.net. It's nice. It's a... Uh, it's a nylon bag, but it doesn't feel cheap. This is nice, high-grade, thick material. It's got some stretch to it, so I'm assuming there's probably some Lycra or something in, in there. Um, so, yeah. It's nice. It's just your average, simple... Oh, try to get in frame. Average, simple, drawstring, cinch sack. But it tightens down real nice, so your stuff's not going to fall out. I've been playing with this over the last 24 hours and kind of using it and abusing it and put it through its paces and come up with some fun, fun things. All right, first things first, one of the other big noticeable differences is the size. All right, we will take, for example, these the old model, the version 2, and just the, the handle portion, what you would hold on to while you're wrapping, up against the new one. They are completely different in size. Length is different, diameter is different. Let's see if I can get that you know, back to back for you. Yeah, huge difference in size. Length is real nice. Um, one of the other noticeable differences is that in the old version 2 versus the new one, each post came with its own top cap. Well, with the version 3 here, each top cap accommodates two posts. I've got them lined up as they are. you got 1.5 and 2, 2.5, 3.5, and 4. Now, this does make it for a, a little more difficult for controlling it. No, um, not not in the use, but in the um, in the packing away. With the old one, it was at least for me. I had cutouts in my build box, you know, specifically, you know cut to accommodate the handle and the uh, the five posts with their caps. So, you know, here now with the three caps and six posts, it's a little bit different. Um, so, but luckily the cinch sack is a good way to remedy that issue. Now, that's the other thing is the old model went from 1.5 to 3 in 0.5 increments. No, I'm sorry. The old one went from 1 millimeter to 3 millimeter in 0.5 increments. The new one goes from 1.5 up to 4 in 0.5 increments. So I like having that extra, you know, wide diameter there. You know, the, the 3.5 and a 4. Honestly, I really never used the 1 millimeter. The only thing I could really think that that would be useful for would be like, you know, rebuilding pro tank heads or something. But that would only be like the, the, the single coil ones. And 
Well, most people got away from the single coil and into the double coil anyhow. So, moving on, we've got the handle, or as I refer to it, the barrel. We've got the top cap, the posts, and your screwdriver. Now, again, it's the Allen head screwdriver, or a hex, mm, a hex driver, whatever you want to call it, and that goes into each one of these screws. These screws are, again, the same style as with the version 2. There, are, there is one screw and two holes. It, is, it comes from the factory set to accommodate wider gauge wire before your thinner gauge wire you take that screw out move it over to this other hole here at which point it accommodates your smaller gauge wires you know your 30s 32s things like that I'll give you a quick demo on that so you get your little Allen driver in there and twist it out. Now the first time you remove the screw it's going to be really stiff but that's okay because I'd rather have the screw stiff and there than to be loose and have it fallen out. Now take that screw bring it up to the next one up. Well this is difficult doing behind the camera there we go. Get it in there. Just give it a nice good you know, couple of spins. And I don't like to wrench it down on there. Just kind of get it finger snug. And now I'm set up for my thinner gauge wire. And that's actually helped me a lot of times because there are some builds I do that I use um, twisted 30 gauge for. So with that twisted 30 gauge, keeping it on that you know factory set large wire accommodation doesn't work. So being able to take it down to that smaller wire wrapping size works really nice for me. And I do apologize for the video quality. Unfortunately, I am on a shoestring budget, so I have to use, for these up-close demos, I have to use an old eyeball webcam, and it just doesn't work as well as I'd like. And I've got a lot of ambient light back there that I just can't seem to get rid of, no matter what I do. Okay, now, there are... A few other modifications that's been made to this one. Okay, the original and the version 2 had one wire hole on the barrel. This has two, each one slanted in opposite directions. If you use the top hole, you'll spin clockwise. In fact, let me go ahead and put a bar on here and show you what I mean. We'll go ahead and use the four millimeter bar since it's right there. See, I like to put it on there, stand it up. Again, it's really more difficult than doing it from this side of the camera. And I'll take my top cap on from the top and slide it through. But a lot of people say the easiest way to do it is you take that top cap of your barrel, put the bar through and then just screw it onto your bar. Though it is easier for me, I enjoy, you know, the, the practice and, you know, the practice for my dexterity. So, you got your two holes there. What you do is you feed your wire through, say, this top hole. Get it, you know, you hold on to it here, you have your long length of wire come off here. You take this and screw it away from you, just like such. 
and you'll create your clockwise coils. Now, on the reverse, you take your next, or you take another piece of wire, put it up through this hole, hold it in the same spot that you normally would, with your tail end coming off this way, or actually it would be down this way, put your top cap back on, spin it towards you, and you'll get that counterclockwise coil that you're looking for. So that's nice. Um, parallel builds. I've heard some people running uh, two wires through the same hole and wrapping it around and it works for them. Well, the wire I was practicing with was 24 gauge and it just it wasn't working for me. So I went ahead and put it through both holes and just kind of gave it a starter wrap by hand. Or actually, down around this way. Starter wrap by hand. Then I put the top cap on. You know what going through now bear in mind this is the first time I've ever made a parallel coil because well I just I, I don't personally use them this was the result I got a beautiful parallel coil now that first wrap there of course I would remove that because well yeah that's the one I, I started by hand but the rest of them just absolutely beautiful nice tight wrap stayed straight and that's the first time I have ever in my life built a parallel coil I did that with 24 gauge now again 24 gauge wire just playing around building the quickest coil I could and just ripping it out of there so again you know I would end up taking out that first that that first loop because well it's not pretty imperfect and quite honestly you can tell you know I played around with this piece of wire a lot I did it in a few coils pulled them out straightened it up on used and abused wire it still made a beautiful coil alright next I used my twisted 30 gauge I hand twisted this. I used my fiance's beading tool. It was a wire twister tool. That's the best I could get. I did this on the uh, four millimeter hole or on the four millimeter post, just because well, I'd never built one that big. Now because it's thirty gauge twisted, it's got some spring to it, but that is still an amazing coil for something I just received yesterday. I'm not familiar with this one. I, I can't just, you know, pop them out like you do on my on my other one. All right. Um, next up, this is where the use and abuse part of this segment comes in. All right. Here's your barrel. Well, let's take the top cap off. Let's take the bar off. Put that top cap back on there. And those threads, they're beautiful. They just spin free, no burrs, nothing. Alright. You see those two holes there? Oh, let's try to get those back in the frame. There's one, there's two. There's two holes there. I decided I wanted to try something. I like using my twisted 30 gauge wire. And I realized if I took a length of wire, folded it over, you know, evened it out, put my ends through there, twisted them up, you know, held onto it nice and tight, put a pole through the other end of that wire, and just twisted for all I was worth. I could probably use this for twisting wire and it'd be a lot easier than that beating tool of my fiance's well here's my result this is my resulting wire okay right here is where I had it 
run through and twist it at the end. So of course I would get snipped off. Right here is the loop where I had it through one of the poles that it was holding. So of course that end would get snipped off. But my center section is absolutely gorgeous. I have never had 30 gauge wrapped that well. It's tight. It, you know, it's just absolutely even. Now, I have no clue whether or not the coil tool was ever designed or meant or purposed for this, but I used it this way and it worked phenomenally. I don't know if it'll do it with other gauge wires without, you know, the risk of stripping out those holes. So, you know, try this trick at your own risk. You know, don't come crying to me or to coilmaster.net if you mess up your gear by abusing it. But that's how I do reviews. You know, I stress test things. You know, I make it do what it shouldn't and couldn't. As you can see, you know, I've kind of scratched up the paint job, running wires through it, you know, between twisted and, you know, oversized wires and 24 and, you know, wires coming out of holes going ways that they're not supposed to. Let's see. What else do we got here? Um, well, one of the things that I like about this is, like I said, those threads, those are just beautiful. It's real easy to just, you know, pop everything together, get it together, put it through. Go ahead and get a length of wire, and I'll show you wrapping the coil real fast. And today we're going to be using... Oh, I just spooled that whole thing. That's going to be forever to get back together. Oh, oh, oh. That's not going to be fun. I need to find something that I can use to keep that wire from spooling out. There's got to be something out there. larger length of wire than I planned, but that's okay. I've definitely been burning through most, actually, honestly, I've burned through most of my wire in the last 24 hours in the process of reviewing this, but honestly, I don't mind because this is a product that I can honestly back 100%. I have not found a single thing, you know, to a point that I wouldn't use this. Now, I've, I've come up with a couple things that I might, you know, want to see in future models. Okay, so, as I said, let's back that up a little bit. It's going through that top hole, so that's going to be for your clockwise rotation. And that Yeah, 3.5. So that clock, clockwise rotation is going to be away from you. Now, to get it started, go ahead and push it down. You know, give it a little bit of snugness, and do your first wrap with it pushed down. One wrap, right there. That's one. The way I do it is every time that nut comes past, you know, that hole, that's one wrap. That's your first wrap, nice and tight. Your, you know, the next wraps, go ahead and just let off of it. Let the tool do its job. So that's one, two, three, four. 
four. Five. Now, admittedly, yeah, I kind of ran out of wire for that back lead, but again, these are just demonstration coils. And you just take it, slide it off. Now, some people are saying it's easier to unscrew the barrel, pop the tip out, and then just, you know, finish sliding it through that way. Then again, most people don't have another six or eight inches of cantle on the other end. But, I don't know. Uh, I like to just pinch it and pull it through. Sorry, I've got a twist at the end of this cantle. Let me clip that. Well, folks, that's how you know it's live. Where are my clippers? There they are. You can tell that my shows are done live, my reviews are live, because there's always a technical difficulty somewhere. Oh, and there went my wire. Woohoo! Alright, and there's that coil. Nice beautiful five wrap coil 24 gauge no kinkiness no nothing it's all yeah right there right up on itself you know it is beautiful but just to you know give that extra little bit of well you didn't show this I'm gonna go ahead and show y'all wrapping oh eh, wow wow I'm tired I was trying to use my Phillips head screwdriver on there I'm going to show y'all 30 gauge wrapped on the same one move that over up to the to the other hole Get it in there. Oh. Nice and snug. I'm going to go ahead and get a piece of 30 gauge. Somebody's looking out for me with that 30 gauge. You didn't school on me. Now watch as soon as it's set it down. You go hear that spring. Alright. 30 gauge. Okay. That was my 3.5. Oh, wait, no. did I move my four or my three point five? Right now I'm trying to tell if I moved my three point five or my four. Mm. Yeah, I moved my three point five. Alright. So where is my errors? And that was the Four. That one is going to be the 3.5. Now, honestly, I don't recommend people take everything and splay it out in front of them while they're working because you'll get confused and try to figure out what you're working with, kind of like I am. Yeah, you know, just get out the pieces you need and leave the rest in the bag. There we go. And that is the 3.5. So we're going to go ahead and, you know what, this time we're going to run this in the opposite direction. We're going to do a counterclockwise coil. We're going to run that through, and we'll do it just, now, that's the other thing, folks. I've seen people run it through the inside, oh, try to get this back on camera. I've seen people run it 
through the inside hole and up. I don't know why. For me, that's just more work. I just run it through the exterior hole or the hole up on the top and feed it through. To me, this this is simpler. But again, it's all based on you know on you and how you want to do it. So, I'm gonna hold your. Where are we? Ah, I'm moving everything. You're gonna hold your wire right there at your hole. You get your top cap position so that the size you're using is in front of you. And for the counterclockwise, you're going to turn it towards yourself. So remember, count with me as the nut passes your wire or your wire hole rather. That's one, two, three, I may have lost count actually, four, five. Close enough. Now we're going to go ahead and feed that through. Get a nice little pinch on those legs. Get it all the way through. And then what I like to do is put it back on that bar and just kind of put it on there. Snug it up a bit. Now, this 30 gauge is always going to have some bounce no matter what. But one of the things that you can do is take it and while it's still on that bar, you hold you hold one of the leads, you take the other, and just kind of pull on it, make it nice and tight, give it another good squish. And there you have it. Beautiful 30 gauge, still together. You don't get that often. You don't normally, you know, when you're wrapping by hand, manage to keep your 30 gauge coils from being anything but a bouncy spring. With the coil master, happens every time. Let's see. Now, I guess conceivably you could do a parallel build with, you know, various size wires, but I don't know if you'd want to or if anybody actually would, but it might be an option. As the name says, I'm still a new vapor. I always will be a new vapor. I've never really gotten into the extensively odd coils or hard to build ones like the Claptons and things like that. I'm just a straight wire kind of guy. The fanciest I get is my twisted wire, which I twist myself, or, you know, the one very first parallel coil I've built, all of which built with the Coil Master system. And quite honestly, when I first started, you know, wrapping my own coils, I was a hardcore, you know, I will always wrap my own coils by hand kind of guy. But when you're working with this twisted wire, especially this really thin twisted wire, the 30 gauge here, after a while it just starts to shred your hands and fingers as you're pulling it through while you're wrapping. And you end up getting kinks in it and yeah, anybody who's ever got a kink in hop in twisted wire knows you get hot spots and you, they're almost impossible to get rid of. So, I was at what was it? Um, Vapor Slam down in Winston Salem, and I came across the little blister pack with the coil, the Coil Master Tool version two, for ten dollars. I decided, what the heck? I'm gonna pick this up. If I don't like it, I'll just give it away. And if I do like it, hey, it's more vape gear. Well, I picked it up. I took it back to the ho hotel room that night and. I fiddled with it, you know, and I failed miserably. I was like, no, I'm putting it away. Well, it turns out in my, you know, in my sleep-deprived state, I was trying to wrap everything backwards. 
and it just wasn't working. So, yeah, that and using the thirty, the twisted thirty gauge, like I was, I didn't understand about moving the the bolt from here to here to get the smaller wire usage. Well, I got home after that weekend, started fiddling with it again. That's when I found out about the bolts and everything else, and I have fallen in love with Coil Master's equipment. I use it pretty much every time. There are a few times that I don't use the coil tool, and that's mainly when I'm wrapping directly onto my onto my wicking material. Um, let's see. But all things considered, you know, I really haven't played with a lot of coil jigs. And honestly, I don't think I'm going to. I'm quite content with this one, and I've never had a problem with it. Now, I mean, if I end up with one for review, yeah, I'll review it. But more than likely, I will always end up coming back to my Coral Master. Okay. Now, with all that said and done, we'll go into what I would like to see different, you know, and the in the next version or two um, for one you know it, it's nice that it's not a high gloss finish it's kind of a matte finish you can't really see too well on this cam because it's all grainy but I'd love to see some some hash marks some head you know some etching here or something you know something to give it a little more grippability you know, maybe a, a satin finish for the paint job instead of, you know, the, the matte or the glossy. Um, a lot of people have said that they want to see it with the bottom side being, you know, like a hex nut itself so it doesn't free spin in there. Honestly, I really don't see a problem with that. So, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Um... Let's see. Um, yeah, I like the bar length. I would like to see it go back to having individual caps per bar, but that's just me personally. Um, I like the cinch sack. I think it should be included with all of the Coil Master tools. Um, the ver like the version 2 that I got did not have the cinch sack. And until I was able to do the cutouts on my build box, I was always afraid I was going to lose something. Um, the screws, keep them as the the uh, Allen wrench and screws, the hex screws, whatever you want to call them. I like the you know number one, the hex screw doesn't slip like your standard flathead would and it doesn't strip out as easy as your standard Phillips would. So I don't want to see that change. Um, maybe some kind of marking on the top caps to, sh to indicate which one is for large gauge wire or which hole is for large gauge wires and which one is for small gauge wires because without taking them off and really looking at the difference in location it's hard to tell what you're set up for. So folks, my advice is, you know, after you've used it, if you are going to go back to, you know, large gauge wire, you know, go ahead and move it back to that large gauge wire in the hole. Um, yeah. Now, one of the other things that's really nifty about this that I would never want changed is the length of these bars because it makes it easier. Let's find one that. Okay. Yeah, what the heck? We'll use that 30 that we built. Go ahead and snip that off real fast. Snip. Oh. Yep, there we go. 
beautiful thing about the length on these bars is you go ahead and get that coil back through there adjust your leads so that they're evened up and they are perfect for getting into your atomizer this is my old dead free spinning as you can see that center post is free spins it is totaled but um, this was or is a plume veil version one this is the one I used to use on all of my juice reviews unfortunately it finally died there was no salvaging it so now we're going to use it as the build deck so what we do now again I'm using 30 gauge so it's going to be a little more difficult to work with but you get those leads right in there pop through Oh, I see the problem. I have a tiny, tiny piece of wire stuck in there from the last time I used this that never came out. There we go. Now it's through. Okay, so again, you go ahead and get your leads lined up. Man, it's difficult from this side of the camera. There we go. It leads through. I don't know if you can see that, but both of those leads are through now. There you go. Now you can see. And now you've got your original gauge bar on there. You can hold it nice and tight. Get your screwdriver. Especially if you run into an issue like I've got with this and it just kind of free spins. There you go. And now you can do all of your adjustments, you know, right there with the original gauge and bar and get that set up just as pretty as you want it. Now, see, mine's kind of tilted at an angle, but part of that is because that center post spun on me. But I can get that back in there, kind of twist it up, down, to the left, right, however I want it. Now, as I said, it's kind of twisted on me and whatnot. The biggest issue there is that that's spinning center post. I'm never going to get a good coil on there again. Because everything just kind of wiggles back and forth. I can't get things tightened up the way they need to be. But the coil itself, while well, you saw it, I made it right in front of you. It was a good coil. And having that extra length bar on there to be able to get it in there and manipulate it it's a stroke of genius because I used to try with my version 2 but a lot of times it just it wasn't long enough I, it would end up hitting the deck before I was able to get that coil where I needed it you know so with this version 3 it's real nice now, I do like the version 3. This one was sent to me for review by Coilmaster. Um, 9 out of 10 times, you know, I don't mention, you know, where I got the product that I'm going to review because, well, I don't want people to think that I'm all about the gimme, 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 gimme. 
a lot of times the items I review I actually go out and spend my own money on or they're given to me by friends saying here you need to try this or I win them this time but, you know I actually got a hold of the vendor you know to tell them that I'd gotten the review for the one for the core master version 2 that I purchased the online and he's like and he said well you know you, you've only got the version 2 okay well let me send you this one okay cool so he sent it to me and I've reviewed it and honestly I'm as happy with this one as I was with the version 2 unfortunately I probably will not keep this one and that's not saying anything bad about it it's actually saying something great about it the reason for that is my father has just gotten into doing rebuildables unfortunately though he has arthritis so sitting there wrapping his own coils by hand around a drill bit is not something that he's gonna really be able to do at least not more than a coil every couple hours however with the new increased size on the coil master tool with the new increased length on the bars and the usability of it all I'm going to be able to get my father a tool that he'll be able to use you know that will make vaping a lot less complicated a lot less painful and just all around more enjoyable so I plan to you know, make sure that he gets this I will hopefully at some point purchase my own again because well as I've mentioned before I am the ghetto vapor I do it all on the cheap um, the, the Coral Master version 3 from the website I want to say runs somewhere between 18 and 20 dollars I'm not exactly certain prices have changed you know from the last time I looked at I think but at some point I will I will get around to buying another one but yeah for now I'm gonna end up sticking with my version 2 because my version 3 is gonna end up going to a much better source so yeah again honest opinion I like it I love it there's a couple of changes I wouldn't mind seeing but those are you know they're minor and they're you know those are just personal preferences um, and for anybody who has a loved one who's getting into or is into rebuilding if you know if they have issues with their hands if they've got arthritis if they have a hard time you know working with those tiny tiny screwdrivers and tiny tiny little uh, drill bits and whatnot get them one of these I honestly think it will it'll definitely help them out for anybody who's you know using you know twisted small gauge wire like I said I far as I know it was never built for twisting wire but damned if it didn't work beautifully and then anybody who wants to build but isn't certain on their skill pick up a coil master anybody can do it you know honestly if it weren't for the fact that you know it says right on the box where is it um, please keep products away from kids I actually would have brought my son on here and had him build you a coil on cam because the mechanism is just that simple the beauty is in its simplicity anybody can use it anybody can do it you know it's it's just a beautiful beautiful piece of equipment and it is you know it's saved my fingers from getting torn up I don't stab myself with canthal like I used to I save a lot more canthal than I used to waste although admittedly yes in this in this review I ran through 
God knows, or not in this review, but in the testing of this, I ran through God knows how much can't fall. Um, now, I cannot speak to how it's going to perform using G-plat, Nichrome, or Titanium, because I don't have any of those wires. So I wasn't able to test it out. Um, in fact, I've never used any of those wires, so I can't even tell you whether I think it'll perform the same. But for anybody using standard Canthal A1, go for it. It is beautiful. For anybody using small gauge or high gauge, small diameter twisted wire, go for it. It works beautifully. Um, but yeah, we'll go ahead and cap it off with a review as we put it away. Starting out, we've got the bag www.coil-master.net and you know, along with that you get your hex driver your coil master barrel Actually, there we go You get your coil master barrel, which is longer, wider, and has two wire feed holes now. You get one, two, three, four, five, six wrapping bars in size between 1.5 millimeter and 4 millimeter moving up in size by 0.5 millimeter increments you have three wrapping caps going from 1.5 to 4 millimeters in 0.5 increments each one has the bar hole plus the two screw holes to bounce from large gauge wire to small gauge wire and you'll find that on both ends of each cap. Now, just in case anybody wants to know, that silver ring in this one, this one is the 1.5 millimeter cap. The 1.5 millimeter cap has that, has that silver ring in there because, I don't know if you can see looking through it. Yeah, not really. But it's a uh, two millimeter hole is the same diameter all the way through. So that silver plug was put in there as a spacer to bring it down to the 1.5 millimeter. Now I've played around with it. I've poked at it. I've you know smacked it with the bar a few times. I've taken the other bar from the other end, which by the way does not reach down to that silver cap in there or that, that that reducer. So the uh, the two millimeter bar does not reach down far enough to hit that reducer. Um, the 1.5 millimeter bar I've used and poked it and prodded it and wiggled it and it hasn't moved so it's an, it's a fixed in there very well. And all that together goes into your bag and it's good to go. Now since you closed, I want you to see something. With everything in there, you know, just kind of shaken down. Yeah. Everything's in there, shaken down. It's only that big. Alright? Comes up to just about the top of the coil master emblem. Leaving you with that much free room in there. What I've taken to doing is the pre-built coils that I made for this review I had just stuffed in there. That twisted wire that I made I just had it stuffed in there. You know, the the parallel coil that I built and the 
the four millimeter old twisted 30 gauge that I had. I just stuffed in there. And you know what? It all fit. There was plenty of room. None of those coils got messed up. Everything in there sits nicely. And even that 30 gauge wire that I had in there was not poking through the bag. So again, it's a well made bag. A lot of extra space to carry extra things. Um, let's see. Yeah, I think that's about it. For any other any other additional comments or questions, leave me you know a comment or question down below, and I'll be more than happy to get back to you, answer it, do an additional review. Um, if you want to see how I twisted the wire on it, let me know. I can do a tutorial on that. If you want to see how I did the parallel build, let me know. I, I can do a tutorial on that. Um, as always, I am New Vapor of the New Vapor channel, the New Vapor Network. You can find me here on YouTube. Just search New Vapor channel. You can also find me on... No, www.vapors.tv over there I host I run and host the new vapor network and I also co-host a show on the southern vapor network the show that I co-host is called down ohm vaping so look for me there if you like this review and tutorial if you'd like to be apprised of additional reviews and or tutorials Look below, you can find the subscribe button. Go ahead and like my video. Go ahead and subscribe to the channel. And I promise at some point I plan to get better equipment. And there probably won't be many videos this long. But there's just there's a lot going on with this coil master tool. And honestly, I'd like to see more of these products coming out. All right, I'll talk to you all later. Have a great day. Vape responsibly.